Charlotte Bronte lived in the 19th century. When we students of English literature look at the first half of the 19th century, we see that writers are actually straddling two ages, the Romantic Age and the Victorian Age. Remember, the Romantic Age began in 1798. You may wonder why, why not two years later? But 1798 was the year when Preface to the Lyrical Ballads was published by Coleridge and Wordsworth. It went on till 1835 when Queen Victoria ascended the throne and then began what we call the Victorian age in English literature. The two ages so different from each other, the literature so different from each other. And let's see where Charlotte Bronte comes in all this literature of the two periods. Most of us have heard of her because of that lovely romantic novel, Jane Eyre. How can we forget Rochester and his falling in love with the governess, Jane, and what happens later? But that's another story. Today, we are going to look at Charlotte Bronte's poem, Life. Do you remember the other two Bronte sisters, Emily and Annie? Maybe you do remember Wuthering Heights, I think one of the greatest novels ever written. And then Annie wrote Agnes Grey. Oh, but I must get back to Charlotte Bronte. She lived a very short life. She got married and died soon after that when she was pregnant. She began her writing career by writing poetry. But the success of her first novel, Jane Eyre, made her give up poetry writing and shift to fiction. But I can't but hell talk about the pity that none of these sisters could write with their own name. This was a period when women were not supposed to write and therefore they had to take on a pseudonym of a male. Charlotte Bronte took on the name of Cara Bell. You may recall that George Eliot too was a woman who took on a male pseudonym. The poem is life and the first line begins with a repetition of the title. So the poem begins, life believe is not a dream so dark as sages say. Oft a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day. Sometimes there are clouds of gloom but these are transient all. If the shower will make the roses bloom, oh why lament its fall? It's a poem of optimism. It seems like a motivational poem. When we look at the poem, we are surprised that there are three stanzas, but each of these stanzas is of a different length. So you have the first stanza of eight lines, followed by a four line stanza, and then a 12 line stanza. Critics may not like the idea of having different lengths for the stanzas, but I'm sure the poet has her own reasons. So she begins by saying that life, some learned people say, is dark. But I don't agree, she says. When there is morning rain, I don't know, living in India, rain any part of the day is welcome. But then remember, this is England. And she is writing about her rain, which is going to be very different. So morning rain, to many people as indication of a terrible day to follow, of maybe sorrow, of maybe troubles. But then she says, for me, it foretells a pleasant day. Sometimes there are clouds of gloom, but these are transient all. I began by saying that this is a poem of optimism and therefore she says, yes, 
there are dark days there are dark days of sorrow there's sadness but they are all transient she's able to see the silver lining behind each cloud if the shower will make the roses bloom oh why lament its fall you're complaining about the rain she says but it's the rain which help the roses bloom and therefore we should really be celebrating the rainfall instead of complaining about it the second stanza says rapidly merrily life sunny hours flit by gratefully cheerily enjoy them as they fly suddenly there seems to be a change in the mood you would notice a change even in the rhythm of the poem because we are talking about happiness happiness comes to all of us it comes so fast and maybe they also fly away just as fast so when they pass away when they leave us we have to accept the fact that it was fleeting that was the four lined second stanza and then we go on to the end of life which he talks about what though death that time steps in and calls our best away what though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway life and death happiness and sorrow all these are the accepted realities of life yes there are times when she says death snatches away our loved ones and it does seem as if life is full of despair full of sorrow because it seems to have a sway over hope but then you can't suppress hope remember the great poet who said hope springs eternal in the human heart so yet hope again elastic springs unconquered though she fell who is there in this world who can ever suppress hope forever so hope springs up right elastic she says it springs up i'm thinking of the ability of the spring you know however much you try to suppress it but i think there is a pun on the word spring here because she is also thinking of the season of spring remember we are thinking of england so we talk about winter and then spring coming and spring everything blooms everything comes back to life after having been covered by snow in winter so hope is like that still buoyant are her golden wings still strong to bear us well manfully fearlessly the day of trial bear for gloriously victoriously can courage quell despair she is ending on a note of hope but she is also telling us that all of us have to be prepared for judgment day the day of trial in many religions of the world the world will come to an end on judgment day and everyone who has lived before that will be called upon to answer whether they deserve heaven or hell so she says manfully fearlessly all of us should be able to face the day of judgment for gloriously victoriously can courage quell despair and the poem ends with an exclamation mark and what does that mean to each reader he can choose his own ending a full stop at the end of a poem indicates a decision taken a conclusion reached a question mark suggests something else but this poem ends with an exclamation so i think it's an open ending are you going to allow despair to win or is it hope which is going to spring back like an elastic what a beautiful poem of optimism and motivation this young lady could write about but under a pseudonym a male pseudonym The figures of speech in this poem interestingly are very simple. We have the metaphor, you know the simile and the metaphor we keep talking of it again and again. But there's also symbolism, remember? When the white dove stands for peace for example, so here you have symbolism 
the morning dream, the question that I already asked you, is it indicative of optimism or pessimism? There's also personification when she talks about death at time steps in. Death is not human, right? Death is not animate, but yet she talks about death stepping in, you know, death walking in. Another place you have it, when hope like elastic springs, right? That is also personification. The rhyme scheme is interesting. Remember, we talked about each stanza being of a different length. So you've got dream, say, rain, day. What does that mean? The first word does not have a rhyming coming immediately, but say and day. So you've got A, B and then C, B. Then you've got gloom, bloom, all, fall, which is D, E, D, E. A rhyme scheme gives a certain metrical meaning, a metrical rhythm to a poem. And therefore, rhyme schemes are very important when we want to appreciate the music of the poem. That was Life by Charlotte Bronte, a woman poet. There was a time when we called them poetesses, but most modern poets just want to be called a poet. When you don't talk about male poets, why do you want to distinguish and call us woman poets, they say. But it would be interesting to go back in history and read other women poets. Elizabeth Barrett Browning, how do I love thee, let me count the ways. Come to India and look at uh, Torudat, for example, or Arudat. Come a little further and you've got Sarojini Naidu, the light nightingale of India. And then you've got Kabla Das. And then you've got to go back to the US, to UK, you've got Sylvia Plath. And then, of course, you have these very, very strong black American, Afro-American women poets. Maya Angelou. Yeah, we'll talk about her, but another day.